Hey, welcome to the channel. Let's clean up this background and we're going to start out with this and then hopefully we will end up with something that looks a little like that. <laughs> Not too difficult to do. We'll do this in Photoshop. So here we are with the original image in Photoshop. I'm using version 25, so the new Generative AI Fill and Generative AI Expand um, is now included in the regular release, so it's not even a beta. All right, so the first thing you notice is that the rim softboxes are in the shot as well as in the, up in the corner. There's a softbox there. Yes, I could crop in a little bit, but it still wouldn't get everything that I want. Um, out of the shot. So uh, for the sake of example, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you how to get rid of all this stuff, right? So I'm going to compare the old way that I've been doing it, which is the content aware fill uh, with using say generative uh, fill and see which one, if in this use case, say a studio shot with a plain background, does that get you anything? Does it buy you anything to use those new tools in this case? Um, so for you studio shooters that use a lot of plain backgrounds, um, you'd be interested in this. So uh, let's do it the old way first, and I'm just going to use content or fill. You can time if you want, um, and I can do it pretty quick. But I'm going to use the I'm going to blow through this, but I'll do it twice on the selection part. So uh, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool, right? And I'm going to come here and I'm going to select this strip box right here, making sure I get this shadow. Hold down the shift key to make multiple selections. Come up here, select that soft box, still holding down the shift key. Select this one, select this one, still holding down the shift, and we'll get this piece of leg over here. Hold down the shift key the whole time to make multiple selections. Now I'm just going to choose shift F5 on the keyboard, hit OK, and let's see what it does. Just like that, really fast, it got rid of all the stuff. There's a little uh, artifact right there, so let's grab that and do a shift F5 again. Boom, that's gone. Still a little artifact, man. That's just giving me trouble today. That's twice. And that's pretty good. So I had to do two little things to clean it up afterwards, right? But what, in a minute or so, um, I got that completed and it's all cleaned up, right? I did that all on the background layer. You're not really supposed to do that. So in the second example, um, I'll hit Control Z. If I had done it on a new layer, I'd just be able to delete the layer, right, and go back. So that's the advantage of doing this on these edits on a new layer. What do I mean by that? Well, let me deselect everything. And now that I'm on the background, I'm going to hit Control J. That's going to duplicate the layer below it, which in this case is the background. Now I make all my edits on this layer, right? Still have the marquee or the rectangular selection tool. I'm going to do the same thing again. We'll take it through it again real quick right here. Make sure we get that shadow. Now hold down the shift key. Keep with it holding down the entire time. Grab this one. Grab this one, still holding down that shift key. Grab this one and grab this one. Now we're going to do generative fill. I'm going to click this button and we're going to see, does this do, I mean, the other method did was pretty clean, right? I'm going to hit generate and it's going to think about it. The other one had hit by now, it was done by now. I'm pretty sure this is slower. Okay, slower, um, a little cleaner. Like this is still like not perfect, but I can do that and maybe do another generative fill, right? Generate. This is the part that's slower. So we had to make two edits on the last one after the initial one, right, to kind of clean it up. This is taking way too long. Still not 100% happy with that. There's like still a dark spot over there. Um, generative fill, generate. Yeah, I just try to get a bigger sample area there. Taking forever. So this is definitely slower. I'm on the same amount of edits. Um, now it's giving me a problem because it actually, I'm on this generative fill layer, which it doesn't like you messing around with. You can't do any more edits. So I'm going to have to flatten everything down or I could merge everything onto a new layer control shift option e because it's not gonna let me do anything on this layer right i just got to get a new layer so let me try that again i mean this is acceptable not to me but i guess for some people it might be acceptable it bothers me 
So now it's going to work. It's not going to complain. Um, so we're probably in the same state that we were with the other one. There's a little dark spot up there. can't remember if we really did anything up there, though. So that was a little more painful, actually, than the old way. So i got to say, um, just because it was slower, I probably made maybe one, about the same amount of edits. I can't remember if I did two or three on the second one. The first one, I did two post edits there. But just by the fact that the old method using content or fill was faster, it was much faster. Um, and then I didn't have to deal with these like layers that I can't do anything with, these generative fill layers. I like, have to either flatten everything down or merge the layers. Pain in the butt. So I gotta say, in this use case, I'm gonna flatten everything down, right click, flatten image, uh, get, get me back here. Control J, duplicate the background layer. In this use case, the old method wins content or fill. So let's do crop, right? I'm going to get my mic closer because I'm sitting back and I'm relaxing a little bit more. Um, when you hit the crop tool, you got to click one time. And when you see the guidelines, that's when the crop is activated and you can actually do something with it. Newbies actually kind of get lost on that little gotcha right there. And just like that. It's little things that we learn over time, little tricks like that that snag up people who are newer to Photoshop um, and they just get stuck and they can't even continue because they're stuck trying to crop because they didn't click one time in the middle to get the guidelines. So I don't know if you saw, but I was grabbing these bars down here and dragging them. Okay. And I only say that because I was a noob at one time too and stuff like that would trip me up, right? So I'm going to grab this and kind of move her over, you know, maybe kind of center her. Again, we're doing the Instagram crop 4x5. That's up here. You just select that crop there, right? And I'm going to choose the old way, content or fill, right? I have to check up here. And boom, it's so fast, right? And looks good, right? Uh, she might, I don't know, if she's a little off center or not. She's pretty close. I might move her to the left a little bit. That's That was fast. So let me undo that, Control Z, go back to where I was and click on the crop tool again click on it again one more time in the middle that activates it to get your guidelines grab the handlebars here pull them she needs to actually be you know about like that get a good crop give her a little headroom so it doesn't look like you had to crop and ran out of space right and that's pretty good so now i'm going to use generative expand hit the check mark and again let's see the other one had hit by now. The other one was done. So this is still slower and just as good. Uh, no, not as good. If you zoom in, you see there's a little line there. So fail. Uh, I'm going to have to come here, and I'm going to have to then clean it up, maybe just like this, and do what? generative fill because I'm sticking with the newer tool waiting for it so I'm just going to go ahead and call it the old in this particular use case uh, and see I forgot I can't do anything with that layer in this particular use case I'm not going to do anything with the generative anymore in this particular use case um, the old method wins content or fill hands down it's faster it's just as clean um, it doesn't generate these layers that I can't do anything with. And, you know, um, and I'm saying in this use case, I know there's probably other, I know there's other use cases where it's better suited to use the new tools, right? If you have a complex background and you wanted to use AI to expand that, um, in that use case, it's better off. For plain studio work, just use the old method. Plain backgrounds like this, this is... Uh, you know, the tools are meant to be used for the right purpose, and I think this is probably the wrong purpose for the new tools. That's what I'll say. Um, nothing against the new tools. I think used correctly and in the proper use case, you're going to see advantages. And this one, nah, just use content or fill. All right, that's all there is to it. Smash the like. That really, really helps me with the algorithm when I start getting a lot of likes. Um, it helps me get seen. It helps the video circulate more. So if you can do that, I really appreciate it. And subscribe if you are so inclined and have a good one. Take it easy.